Hello everyone, it's your casual gamer Meep here, and welcome back to the channel. It's been about a week since patch 5.2.0 dropped, and with it we got a lot of changes both big and small. The most notable change right off the bat includes the release of the Chapter 21 Hellraiser DLC with the release of the Killer Pinhead. With his release, his perks and add-ons have remained relatively unchanged, so like how they were in the PTB originally, but he's gotten quite a few tweaks when it comes to his actual power. In addition to fixed issues for his chain hunt, they made it to where the chains that spawn in the environment will have more consistent spawns to where they won't be blocked by certain obstacles and if they are blocked, another one will spawn to make up for it. They gave recently unhooked survivors also a brief period of invincibility from being attacked by a chain hunt, which I think is fair overall. They've also made it to where the chain hunt will always spawn three chains, previously unbeknown to even me at the time. It was based on the number of survivors that were still left in the trial, which was an interesting little detail, but... Probably a lot unknown to a lot of us, needless to say, so overall it's a good, more consistent change. As for the Lament configuration, it's been made more punishing for the survivor who holds onto it for an excessive amount of time. Previously, it would stop all chain hunt counters for all survivors, with the holder getting an occasional chain spawning in the environment to attack them. Essentially, you could take half his power hostage, similar to how you can take Victor away from Charlotte. Now, taking the Lament configuration pauses the, all the chain hunt timers for the other survivors, rather than resetting them altogether, and the timer for the holder keeps ticking up while the chain hunt begins. This more or less incentivizes the holder of the box to solve the puzzle, lest they be punished by constant chain attacks more or less, making it more difficult to run the killer around and to do objectives overall. This is a fair change overall considering that there is no real punishment for holding onto the box indefinitely, and there is no means for Pinhead to call the box back similar to how Charlotte can do it with Victor. Unfortunately, having been released, his lunge is bugged where he loses his swing's momentum when attacking around obstacles. Basically, he has to attack, attack a survivor running straight forward more or less to keep his momentum. Also, his voice lines that we heard in the PTB and the infamous I came line has been temporarily removed. Interestingly enough though, his legendary skin of the Chatterer, which is a different set of bite character from the film, has its own voice lines or rather teeth chatter audio still intact. Speaking of legendary skins, Steve Harrington's Jonathan Byers skin has also gotten his own independent voice lines, so whenever you equip the skin, you won't hear Steve's screams or grunts of pain or breathing anymore, you'll hear Jonathan Byers, which overall is a pretty cool detail that they've added in. Another character who got some love and attention this patch was also the Nemesis, as both of his Ultra Air add-ons have gotten a buff too. His Shattered Stars badges, which greatly increases the speed of which zombies move after a generator is completed for up to 30 seconds, is now up to 60 seconds, so a full minute each time meaning a zombie can greatly gain its speed for up to 5 minutes each game. His Iridescent Umbrella Badge, which causes the survivor to suffer from the exposed satisfaction effect whenever they use a vaccine for up to 12 seconds, is now up to 30 seconds. So needless to say, you can have survivors, if they use all four of the vaccines, exposed for up to 2 minutes more or less. Also, his Tier 3 tentacle has received a minor buff as well. Previously, whenever he held his tentacle up in the air ready to strike, previously he moved at 3.8 meters per second, which is slower than a survivor running speed. Now it's up to 4 meters per second, which is the same speed as the survivor overall. This is a nice little change. It's kind of actually like Michael Myers in a way, because Myers, whenever he's in tier 3 with his evil within, he gets a slightly longer lunge and faster vaulting speed. It's also another incentive to hit tier 3 otherwise, and makes him more viable to use. Overall, all decent changes with his add-ons and his tier 3 tentacle. The last major change with patch 5.2.0 has been the introduction of the skill-based matchmaking system, aka MMR. The idea behind it is to pair players of similar skill against other players with similar skills. Whether or not it's accurate in measuring each player's skill is yet to be determined. Over the next month or so, you should probably expect some inconsistent games for it, as it'll take some time probably for it to give a good accurate MMR score for both your survivor and killer more or less. All we can do in the meantime is stay optimistic and hope that it'll perform its intended function without drastically increasing lobby wait times. With the introduction of the MMR, the rank system has also changed quite a bit, so instead of having ranks like we've had for the past few years, there's now going to be grades with varying colors to represent the range of players. Starting at low ranks, there's Ash, then Bronze, Silver, Gold, and Iridescent. Each grade range goes from 4 to 1, so if you are Ash 4 for instance, that will equal rank 20, with Ash 1 being rank 16, and so on and so forth with the, with the other grades. With each grade, whenever you earn a pip through the emblem system, it will apply to your grade to advance you to the next grade, similar to how the old matchmaking system worked. Every 13th of the month, all players, regardless of their grade, will be sent back to Ash 4, aka rank 20. You'll also receive a blood point award that varies based off your final grade from the previous season. 
If you reach Iridescent 1, aka rank 1, you'll receive up to a quarter of a million blood points, 250,000. So if you're rank 1 with both Survivor and Killer, you'll receive half a million blood points, which is pretty good, honestly. This is going to help reduce the grind in a way, but when you get into the level 50 blood webs as I am with all my hours of experience, a quarter of a million blood points, or even half a million blood points, it goes by really fast, like, the average level 50 blood web is like 50,000 blood points, so 10 blood webs, those points are going to be gone. It would be nice though if they upped the blood points even more to half a million for hitting Iridescent 1 with both sides, so you could earn up to an extra million. It is finally nice though to have rank rewards though. I remember last year around this time they discussed it and I was mad when they didn't roll it out. When it was seemed like they were teasing like it was going to be released a lot sooner. But I am glad it's finally here for both newer players and for veteran players to finally have a, a more incentivized purpose for reaching rank 1. Some of the minor changes that they put in this patch is they made the palettes more vibrant. So they're more realistic and industrial looking in my personal opinion, but they're not as vibrant in color like they used to be. It's a small noticeable change. And under one note in the miscellaneous section it states, changed pallet hitboxes to prevent the killer from getting stunned when on the same side as the survivor dropping the pallet. My interpretation of this note means they basically made it to where survivors can no longer re reverse pallet stun the killer. This tech, quote unquote tech, being where you and the killer are on the same side of the pallet, the killer goes to swing, but the survivor who drops the pallet, it stuns the killer and cancels out their lunge. This normally allows the survivor who stunned the killer enough time to vault the pallet before the killer has recovered from the stun. This deck has gotten harder to perform over the years for survivors to perform with each and each change that goes into the game, and it's a bit sad to see it go all together. At least, that's my interpretation of this little note. So, yeah, we'll have to see going forward. Moving on to the hotfix of patch 5.2.1, which was released today, more good news all around. Both the Dog Saloon and the Raccoon City Police Department map, which have been previously disabled for their own independent reasons, Dead Dog being there was an accident so infinite that formed, and Raccoon City Police Department for various performance issues, if I am remembering correctly, have both been re-enabled so we can now play them and use the map offerings for them now. Interesting enough though, this hotfix also includes a lot of minor bug fixes related to cosmetics and sound effects in general. They have fixed an issue where Freddy could get stunned with his own dream palettes, which is inherently kind of funny. Since the bug first began, I've only gone up against one palette Freddy. I dropped a dream palette on him, I saw the blood and everything, and I was injured at already at the time, and I was so confused and excited like my adrenaline was pumping that he got stunned by it. If you're an achievement hunter like I am, you'll be relieved to know that it'll be a bit easier to get the Raccoon City Recruit achievement. This achievement is the one you get from completing the main hallway generator and escaping more or less. Sometimes depending on the RNG of the map, you'll have one generator spawn in the main hallway by the debris, and sometimes you'll have up to two, one at the very top of the main hallway staircase, and the other one at the very bottom of the room. I'm like 90% sure the achievement only counted the single generator spawn, but hopefully this will fix the issue and so it'll be easier to get this achievement more or less. But yeah, overall good changes and fixes for the game. There's still a lot that needs to be done, but it's another step in the right direction. Personally, I'm hoping for more perk changes since it's been a while for a perk to be changed in a significant way. I don't really consider the buffs to No Way Out and Hex Crowd Control in that regards, only because their values were increased slightly so, while their intended function still remains the same. Also, it would be nice to know if and when they're going to continue with the map graphic updates, because they still have Haddonfield, the Swamp Maps, and also the Red Forest Realms to touch up upon. But yeah, let me know down below in the comment section on what you would like to see changed in Dead by Daylight. And with that being said, I'm Meat Plus Than 3, and I hope you learned something new with this video. If you did, consider leaving a like and or subscribing to the channel. I'm only 11 subscribers away from hitting my 100 goals, so... Yay. And with that, I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.